So this is um, a case that my fellow in Florida, that's why we sent him to Florida, um, you know, was, <laughs> was, was, was part of, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Pete. So, and, but he was kind enough to put together this presentation before he left. Um, a 62 year old female, a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, obviously obese. Had a, she has a history of coronary disease, had a stent by one of mine and George's partners um, uh, in the proximal PD in the past, had angina, was bought in, was bought in for cath. Hypertension, dyslipidemia, like I said, and the coronary history is not relevant to our presentation, but she did have that. And well medically managed um, and uh, vitals and everything was fine. So this was the access, this is an important picture. So the access site at the time of angiogram was this. So you can see, uh, you know, the uh, reflection of the inferior epigastric, likely probably retroperitoneal or close to, uh, and maybe, I don't really see a dissection, but maybe there's some haziness at the site of access. So let's, it's very, very difficult to tell on this angiogram. So, so Prakash, what do you teach your trainees as far as, do you do micropuncture? Do you just go straight with a six French sheath? Uh, I mean, how, how do you, well, how do you image? You know, I, I wish, ultrasound? we're not an ultrasound lab at all, which is not good. Um, you know, um, I think that uh, we do use, uh, what we do do is micropuncture and we form, uh, we, we use fluoroscopic guidance um, to do this. So obviously this is very, very high uh, for sure. And they should have been checked with the uh, the dilator of the uh, through the injection with the dilator, but in this case they didn't. So this is, <coughs> I think, the initial problem that occurred. So yeah, so I think I, obviously, as Dr. Mustafa said, I think uh, fluoroscopic will will may prevent it, but you do tend to be high with fluoroscopic. I mean, not fluoroscopic, ultrasound guided. So anyway, this is the coronary angiogram. So um, they did a stent of the right, as you can see. And great result, pa pa pa, and everything looked good. So they wanted to send the patient home. They did an they did an angiogram seal closure with a six French. Patient went home. Two weeks later, she presented back to her primary cardiologist, noting ongoing new lifestyle limiting right sided leg pain uh, with severe claudication. She basically was normal and had uh, converted to a severe claudication in two weeks. Cardiologist very rightfully did an ultrasound in his office and very clearly diagnosed, and I wrote, I've just highlighted in the bottom, severely decreased PSV and monophasic waveforms in the right lower extremity compared to the normal PSV and the triphasic waveform in the left lower extremity. And basically, uh, immediately called the cath lab and sent the center to the cath lab. So patient came to the cath lab, and we immediately suspected vascular injury. We notified our, our, our team, vascular surgery team, who recommended, hey, they're in the cath lab, let's do an angiogram. So again, here it is. So we did an angiogram. So here's the, uh, obviously we got contralateral access. Again, you could go for CAT scan, but I think the suspicion was so high that they just well, wanted anatomic definition and then, and then did it. But, and we did do full runoff, which I don't show here for the sake of time. She had three vessel runoff. So we did this picture. So we saw this and um, I mean, what do you guys think? Dissection or possibly angioseal clot or, or clot? Anything, Dr. Ferris? I mean, all of the, all of the above. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, one of those or a combination of those. You know, yeah. maybe a dissection that, that went on to thrombose, or maybe an angiosilin was deployed right. partially into the lumen or partially into a dissection. But but yeah, I think you're you're right. It's some access related. Something access related. So we so after since we had three vessel runoff, uh, we felt that the angioseal was was a major issue. We felt that it wasn't. I mean, technically easy as surgery, as I was told, but but definitely could be approached surgically uh, because it's kind of external iliac slash common femoral. Um, we we felt that maybe a surgical control would be the best thing. So uh, so and our surgeon uh, who's no longer with us, uh, but he's a great surgeon. Uh, he left. Uh, he, he took her to the OR and was going to do it in the OR. Now this is he, where he's things not get dead. Is he? he's no longer? No, no, he's not dead. No, ah. he, no he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be very careful in this room. So, no, he's not dead. So, he actually was here the other day for the first day of the conference. So, so anyway, the uh, the so in the surgical OR because the patient was on on, on Plavix, the anesthesia P, and she's an obese patient. Anesthesia did not want to give anesthesia, so he went ahead and did a coverage stand um, of of this particular one. So again, uh, and then and then here. So, so the coverage stand, the 7 by 50 Viabon was placed in the right external iliac artery. So the patient in the recovery area was noted to have pain, coolness, and pallor of the right foot. Additionally, there was a loss of DPPT pulse 
and we were called we were called to do a peripheral angiogram um, at that time uh, because I guess the, there was another emergency case in the OR. So then at this stage, we we again he had to access on the opposite side, and you could see the Viabon was placed there, and you know this it's like one after the other happened, and now you see this here. So this is what we saw at the level of the profunda. And we said, okay, this is cool. I mean, we, you know, they, but we either cut down and get it. And then this is what happened in the popliteal. Sure. So this sort of speaks to the, the point that people have been bringing up as far as the acuity of the thrombus. The, is there some way to protect the outflow during your intervention? I mean, right. this sort of highlights all those. Well, you know, I think what you always taught me is that, you know, when we do the vibe on it's sometimes a false sense of security because you can toothpaste the stuff out, you know, and that's what probably happened. I'm sure it was covered. And then balloon angioplasty and things toothpaste it out, and then you have some yeah. climb. So then this is there, and then let me it's see. It's probably pretty acute. I mean, it's it's and then and then at the time of the access or, or immediately thereafter. Sure. So distal, this is the runoff to the foot. So she had three vessels to begin with. So now, what do you think? Thrombectomy, surgical, mechanical, mechanical thrombectomy. Okay, one vote for that. Anybody else? I'm still concerned this is uh, from the angio seal uh, right yeah. from the start, and uh, that is incredibly hard to get out. And if it embolizes further down, you're not going to have much to do. Yeah. Uh, you had a lot of uh, stuff at the popliteal over there. Um, I'm not sure what it looked like right above this and below the popliteal, but if possible, I'd send him for a surgical embolectomy. Yeah, well, the absolutely. But this is where I made all the wrong decisions. I said, okay, well, let's manage it um, endovascularly, and you'll see what happens. So, so we said, okay, let's get a penumbra. So we put a filter down. And we said, let's do this. And this is what Dr. Sachar and we were telling Dr. Bosker. We said, oh, wow, that's a great job. We got the penumbra. And then we said, oh, my goodness, look how beautiful that is. We did a great job. And then we said, let's check down below. And uh -huh. we'll send it there. There he is. So one the by culprit. one. Dr. Dangus. One by one. We'll take care of the external. Lilia, we'll take care of the common femoral and keep advancing. <laughs> keep advancing. So yeah, so there's the. That's what we call kick the can down the road. <laughs> what, what is it? It's a uh, percutaneous mechanical initial vessel and subsequent all subsequent vessels. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> right. Keep so, going. Honestly, it was um, you know this was uh, truly the Florida fellow's fault because you know, uh, but so anyway, so so this happened, George. As remember, a surgeon who's no longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, where, where is the pindalaxis discussion? Well, here? oh my God. <laughs> so we did have a filter down there, right? So I said, okay, let's let's go ahead, and you can see here. There's the filter. The filter is there, and there's a second area in the popliteal. You can see it's underfilled. So we said, okay, you know what? Let's keep the filter so there, mm -hmm. and let's aspirate it with the filter. So this might have been pretty cool. So we went in with the penumbra, we pulled the filter back, and we aspirated the whole thing with the filter holding the the, the goober. So we were able to get this goober out. So then. With this goober, we said, oh, wow, we're looking pretty good here, but we got Let's that distal goober. Down. So, so the distal goober, you can see here. So we said, there it is. So this is after multiple penumbra runs. This is what I was left with. Now the patient all of a sudden has three vessels. And we said, wow, let's make it a little bit better. So we aspirated a couple of more times. And then I did the stupidest thing that I could have ever done. I did a balloon angioplasty. And let's see what happens next. There is absolutely... Nothing. Kick the can down the road. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to tell you, uh, Dr. Ferries, the Florida fellows suggested the balloon angioplasty. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and Isn't that just the way? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, at this stage, Ajith was not, uh, the, you know, an attending yet. So unfortunately, I couldn't call Ajith. Dan was your fellow, so I couldn't call Dan. Rami was working somewhere, so it was crazy. So anyway, so here we were, we're like, what do we do? So we talked to the doctor uh, who had helped us, and, and he suggested that we could, he could do a cut down of the DP pull, and, and try to pull it up uh, or, or do some Fogarty from below. So at this stage, again, I wasn't listening. So I said, oh, I'm gonna try to suck it out more. So I went down with the catheter and I injected and I did this. So now you can see she's moving her foot. She's having a tremendous amount of pain as we speak. So, so what I did was uh, I, I, I took a, a um, penumbra down, and then I, I actually took a wire, and I made it into like a, a ball. You know, I just kept pigtailing it till it became a big ball. So then I, I took a microcatheter past the, uh, the, the clot, and then I turned the penumbra on, and then I started spinning the ball 
and aspirating back and forth. And then we were able to get it out. Where we're not MacGyver, sure. very nice. And then there's the foot. And then we went ahead and did it for the posterior tibial on both you sides. You gotta go all the way in all anatomical areas then, of the body. And then we're Keep able on. to get beautiful both. result though. And then we were able to get the uh, popliteal and we established three three of us on runoff. It was 3.30 in the morning when um, my Florida fellow said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna quit. So- I have uh, a flight to catch. I have a flight tonight. to catch. So, no, well, I mean, listen, all jokes aside, take home point. I mean, it's very simple. I think this is very easily managed surgically. Uh, I don't know if Dr. Ferris can comment on that because I'm not a surgeon, but I think that maybe a Fogarty from the beginning with a cut down and, a, and, and, and you know, we could have heparinized her or we could have forced the OR to take her or something and, and they would have been able to pull it out. I mean, Dr. Ferris, any comments on that? Yeah, a couple. I would say, I mean, I think you've illustrated very nicely some of the issues that, that we can be confronted with and it's, it's uh, you know, great to, to present this to the audience. Uh, I think the first thing we've learned from this sort of thing is we never take fellows from Florida. <laughs> Uh, no, that's, that's, that's right off the table. Uh, we're joking no, guys. He's in the audience. That's why we're picking on him. Uh, but no, I think you're, I think Dr. Patrick was, was on, on top of this from the outset. If you're worried about, you know, your closure device being intraluminal, that's going to be hard to treat, not impossible, but, but that can be very hard to treat, um, you know, endovascularly and, and, and maybe open management is a consideration. But again, you consulted with the vascular surgery team and this was sort of the determination that was made. So. Um, yeah, I think a, an open approach from the outset might have been yeah, it would have a little been bit easier, so yeah. Easier. Dr. Han has some thoughts, though. You're not from Florida, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you do need a microphone. <laughs> yeah, you do need a microphone. <laughs> Dr. Kapoor, also, line up towards the microphone, Dr. Kapoor. <laughs> Such a good case to share. I think, you know, we watch it, and we're cringing and kind of laughing, but the heartache and the actual cath lab at that time, I can... It's palpable and you can actually feel it. Yep. Um, quick question for the panel. I think we talk about using a cover stent to exclude thrombus. We talk about that all the time because you have a covered material, it's not gonna toothpaste in. And then we go in and balloon afterwards. Are you sizing that one-to-one -one when you're worried about thrombus behind that cover stent? Should you be undersizing? Should you be ballooning? And are you, how much overlap are you getting before and after that area of thrombus so you're not gonna lead to something like this in toothpaste? Great question. Well, and also make sure you didn't push the thrombus down when you were advancing the stent, right? So that all those things. Yeah. A, you may have pushed it while you were advancing. Uh, uh, B, you really need a, a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of landing zone, particularly distally, particularly distally. You wanted the stent, so to speak, to, to uh, you know, oppose well distally. So you need to somehow oversize and uh, avoid the postulation, I would say. That's the key thing. And it's tough to do that in the common femoral distal iliac because right, you've got tough. the profunda and so you can't really make it that much longer. So, yeah. when, you had, when you had that distal embolization, any thought of using a local TPA as one of those uh, it, therapy when you're all the way you down? Know, no, we, we talked about like what Dr. Sachar just said. We thought it was uh, all gummus material. And actually, I don't have the pathology. Uh, I, I should have uh, put the report in. It showed up as angioseal, uh, uh, collagen. So it's mainly the uh, collagen just going to keep and then probably the, getting the Dr. Thrombus. Guja uh, came after the discussion of the case. Uh, so <laughs> let's just see. Any any comments about bailout? <laughs> Dr. Guja can be part only on the bailout part of the, uh, of the, of the course. And you do need a microphone. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, another question. I think PK glossed over the most important thing here, which is what you did with the wire at the end. You created a Fogarty out of a wire, which I think is uh, what a great uh, example of thinking on your feet, because otherwise it'd be very hard to get that back. No, out. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I'm from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> But it, I'm still at Monster Nine, Florida. Um, so, so what about Ivers to see like exactly what we're dealing with? We thought it could have been um, chambers versus like um, debris. Like, would have, would have, would this have changed the management in terms of aspiration, like more often, or doing angiojet versus penumbra? Any, any imaging help on that case? I mean, I, I you know, we had a great clinical picture. We knew that, you know, two weeks out likely had some thrombus um, and, and we knew. So, you know, we, I don't know whether it would have added anything. 
I think the, what Dr. Ferries and, uh, was saying was that the initial decision to, to, to first of all, the coverage stand, that might have been something unavoidable in that. But after that happened, which I think is like, you know, we could have done a cut down in a Fogarty because we knew then it was clearly material that was embolizing. Uh, so I don't know that IVIS would have really helped. Yes. Can you uh, explain for the fellows and from I'm a fellow myself, but the wire technique at the end. Um, well, it was just once you it were was, so distal. What the technique is. And so what basically, the benefit is. basically, you kept pushing it down, right? So what I wanted to do was try to pull it back with with sort of like a almost like a um, um, a Fogarty, like right? a knot. But so I made a knot on the wire. So when you when you do that, you have to load the wire into a microcatheter, right? You have to take the microcatheter distal. Okay. Past the thrum. No, first, first you have to wire past the clot into the arch. Mm -hmm. Then what I did was I put a, a, a coronary microcatheter, distal, tip out the wire. Okay. And, and then what I did was I made my knot. With my, uh, what I did was I put the wire into the introducer, made my knot, then pulled the wire back into the introducer so I can introduce it into the microcatheter. Then as I pushed it out, it formed a big, big, it was a ball like this. And then we just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as we pulled it Especially under full aspiration. To prevent so I, things from going further as well. No, I was pulling it back and I was aspirating from below. So remember, the penumbra aspiration is very, very strong. So, so I, any sort of channel I was creating, it was sucking back. And I knew I might be sending things into the toes. But at this stage, I figured I needed to get perfusion into the foot. And, and that's what I, we were lucky. We were lucky. And sometimes you need luck. We had a lot of bad luck. We ended up with good luck.